Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as we prepare to walk into Almighty God, our afternoon sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Father's forgiveness, for it's full of gentleness and compassion. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Yeah. And may Almighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. with devout thanksgiving for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation and where the head has gone before in glory the body is called to follow in hope through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit.
to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promises of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And he answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them and said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones. And what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe, in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead, and seeing him at his right hand in the heavens. 
far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always, unto the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and my dear sisters in Christ, two of the pillars in which God has established this Catholic faith is that we're established on word and sacrament. And having a word and sacrament reminds us of the glory of God. God is not simply just a man of his word. When God speaks, he gives always some token to remind us that what he speaks, he means what he speaks. When he makes a promise, he will keep it. And therefore, he gives us a pledge of his fidelity and faithfulness to that word. And so both in word and sacrament, he gives us his word, but in sacrament, leaves us that visible token, that sign by which we as Catholics can draw forth courage, encouragement. We can draw forth comfort in our pilgrimage to this earth. And it's in keeping with that idea of word and sacrament revealing God that I'd like to look at today's feast. I'm going to look at it into these two parts. The word, and then of course the visible token, and the visible token is an image. The word, power and authority. Power and authority are not abstract concepts. They can be felt. They can be experienced. They can be seen. They can be heard. Power is not a figment of our imagination. Pa is not something that is metaphorical, it is real. And in this state in which the world and we as Americans find ourselves, even as Catholics, we begin to understand that Pa is real. We, for example, we boast of our liberty, but in this crisis, we're reminded that liberty is not without bounds. The state 
possesses great authority. It can set bounds and limits to our freedom. It can take it and it can also give it. It's not absolute. A very important lesson which we as adults need to learn, but even more so our children, that freedom has limits. And in this crisis, all of us are learning that it has bounds. And the state in quarantine, in telling us to stay home, reminds us of the great power and authority that it possesses. Because power is not a question of imagination. It's not a question of something that's metaphorical. It is real, it can be experienced. It is something can be felt and much the same as Christ's power. It can be felt. How can it be felt? We oftentimes, you know, speak of our powers. It amazes me at times how the power and authority which we take from God, we take to ourselves. We will deny him it, but we'll take it to ourselves. And so, for example, in today's first reading, the matters of times and seasons. To whom truly does this part authority of times and seasons belong? We will deny it to God, but how often we take it to ourselves. We speak about what we're going to do tomorrow, what we'll do five years from now, times and seasons, as if we possess it, but God does not. And in every respect, today we have been reminded in every respect that times and seasons belong to Him. Pa belongs to God. Authority is His. And even though at times we may contend with Him, over it, a fact still remains that it is His. We oftentimes set limits to God's power. We may come into this house, for example, and say, while I'm in this house, God has control. But once I leave the doors and go home, my life is mine. His power and authority ceases and mine continues. In the matter of life and death, for example, we live in a world today where we believe we can take life, we can take it whenever we want, because I have the freedom to do it. But if I say God has it, oh no, he doesn't, I do. And in this contention between us and God and Pa, we realize in our lives that what Jesus speaks about today, this Pa, is not an abstract concept. It is not metaphorical. It is not figurative. It is not some figment of our imagination. It is something that is real. One of the great readings we have at our funeral liturgy comes from the book of Ecclesiastes. And there in the third chapter reminds us all times and seasons belong to God. There's a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot. And you have these series of antithesis where God reminds us, all of it is mine. And we as Catholics, when we come into this place, come into this house, in our liturgy, in our words, in our lives, ought to remember that to him begins or belongs all power and authority. And in a man who wishes to contend with him, contend at their own peril. Which brings me then to this matter there for the imagery. Because today the imagery that we have and this feast we celebrate is really about power and authority. It breaks my heart at times, you know, and I can understand. I can deal with it with a man who does not believe. I grant it to him. But at times when it comes to us who proclaim to be people of faith, and it comes to the mysteries we celebrate, where we question, and what we question really is God's power and authority. Take the imagery of the ascension. If you take it, there is Jesus laid out in today's words. In words, it's painted. But like of Rembrandt, will take it and paint this wonderful grand image of Jesus in the clouds, his apostles looking upon him. And will say, God can't do that. No one can levitate. That is stupid and ridiculous. If it is that God can't do these great things, 
Here's the question that we have to ask, we have to ask ourselves. If God cannot do marvelous and great things, because St. Paul speaks today of God's glory, that which he can do, uniquely his, and if he cannot do these wonderful, great things, make way in the Red Sea, open doors and do these things, here is the question, then what good is he? What good is God if he cannot do these things? And in today's face of the ascension and the readings laid out, God lays out the heights, its depth, the extent of his power and authority. And it extends over everything and everyone, both friends and foes, both animate and inanimate, the living and the dead, the power is all mine. And I ask for those who question the extent and depth of God's power and authority, what image would you put in its place? And I guarantee you'll never find one. So when we look at the image of Christ ascending, when we celebrate this feast of Christ's ascension, when he reminds us all things are under my feet, could you find a more appropriate image drawn from sacred scripture, drawn by God by words, brought out by paints and canvases by artists like Rembrandt, and we will say, what greater token and imagery has God given us that yes, all authority belongs to me. All of it under my feet. If not that imagery. And if he cannot accomplish all of that, then what good is he? I'll leave you with words, you know, in the book of the prophets. The prophets are replete with the scrutiny and just the great power and authority of God. And the prophet Isaiah, at one point, you know, frustrated as he is with the lack of faith on the people of Israel and the part of their lack of faith and their doubting and all this stuff. And he asks this question. He says, have you not known? Do you not know? Have you not heard? Have you not been told to you from far, from the prophet of old? Have you not been told? the greatness of the person within your midst. And the book of the Psalms reminds us of the greatness and power of God. And in the 103rd Psalm, it reminds us, this God, whom we as Catholics serves, David calls and he says, bless him. Never forget his gifts. It is he who pardons our iniquities. He pardons our sins. It is he who crowns us with kindness and compassion. Forget him not. It is he who redeems our souls from death. Forget him not. It is he who fills our lives with good things. Forget him not. Forget not his gifts. I'll leave you with what I always do. I always remember in moments like this, you know, I remember my mom. I'm from Jamaica. I was not, grew up in a place of wealth and privilege. We in Jamaica do not have a welfare system as we do in the United States. Great support system. All we have in every respect is our faith. And my mom was a great person of faith. And if anyone believes that pawn authority cannot be felt, the pawn authority of God cannot be felt, cannot be experienced, cannot be seen, they're wrong. It can be felt. It can be experienced. And as I said so many times in this house, in this very place, in my house, my mom was a woman of great faith and in that house 
There was no presence, no power, no authority felt like that of God. It was real, it was live, and in every respect, what we as Catholics ought to grasp is that very idea that God's power can be felt, it can be experienced, it can be seen, it can be heard. Because this God, this God whom we service, this God whom we worship, this God in whom service we've been called to preach this good news of the gospel, of amazing grace, he's an amazing God. He does wonderful and great and splendid things. And if only as Catholics we can grasp the beauty, the power, the authority of the man and the stuff that he accomplishes. And we more than ever, he has left us both in word and sacrament, tokens, his pledge and down payment. He's given it to us all. What a privileged people we are. And when we celebrate this Feast of the Ascension, we're reminded that unlike man who uses his power and authority for his own exaltation, the beauty of God, the goodness of God, he takes all that power he has, all the sovereignty, and he simply takes the things of our lives, bless them, Fill them with life, and he bestows upon his people. What a privileged people we are to be Catholics. Let us stand to profess our faith in, in the spirit of the season of Easter. We profess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us raise our minds and hearts in prayer to God, the ever generous giver of love and life. For the renewal of your church on earth, that it will be ignited by the Holy Spirit to zealously share the joy and hope offered through the death and the resurrection of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country, that our leaders act with sound judgment, that we citizens work together in charity, caring for the vulnerable, the forgotten, and the lonely, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all residents of nursing homes, homes for the aged, and all residential homes, that God, our loving Father, will protect them and keep them ever safe, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who are sick and dying in isolation without the care of their loved ones, that they be consoled by the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, and they sense the loving presence of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead and all who have died, especially those who have died without family or friends around them, for their grieving families, may the light of Christ's conquering over death be their support and strength, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We present to God in the silence of our hearts our own particular intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O good and gracious Father, we turn to you at this moment in time to plead to you to end this pandemic, to spare our loved ones and us from this sickness. Help those who are inflicted, their families, who must see them from afar, and those who help and care. May our blessed mother, health of the sick, St. Joseph, the protector of your church, St. Margaret of Antioch, our patroness, intercede for us now 
and at the hour of our death. Amen. and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Let the sacrifice at my hand for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord, we offer sacrifice now in supplication to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. And grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended, not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before, and therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, with the angelic host, sing together the ending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. these holy and unblemished sacrifices 
we shall offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all who are gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true celebrating that most sacred day on which your only begotten Son, our Lord, placed at the right hand of your glory our weak human nature, which he had united to himself, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James and John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude. Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Prosagonus, John and Paul, Cosmus and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and a drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Majesty, from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept 
the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar and high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation of the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and now rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, and Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. For whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, bless them with life, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be born free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Ah, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever. All power 
as in the event will be, in heaven and on earth, alleluia. Go therefore and teach all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, alleluia, alleluia. mysteries. Grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you through Christ our Lord. Amen. And please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you, for on this very day his only begotten Son pierced the heights of heaven and unlocked for you the way to ascend to where he is. Amen. May he grant that as Christ after his resurrection was seen plainly by his disciples, so when he comes as judge, he may show himself merciful to you for all eternity. Amen. And may you, who believe he is seated with the Father in his majesty, know with joy the fulfillment of his promise to stay with you unto the end of time. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you 
now and forever. Amen. And our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve God and one another. Thanks be to God.